is Monday. We're dealing with some technical stuff, because why wouldn't we? Uh, it is Monday, right? Yesterday was Sunday, today is Monday. I think so. Okay, cool. Uh, as you can see, we're joined in the kitchen today by a not quite teenage mutant ninja turtle. We have a what? What would you say? You're not a teenager. You're you're not a tween. You're just a young. You're just a boy. You're a boy teenage mutant ninja turtle, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, cool. And which one are you? Michelangelo. Yeah, Michelangelo. What do we know about Michelangelo? Um. Well, he's the one that wears the orange Yeah, and what else? Um, his weapon is nunchucks. Nunchucks, yeah, he's very fast. Yeah, what else? Is he the one that likes food? Yeah. Oh, so it's a good thing you're here today, because we're making some food. All right, so what, <laughs> what we're going to do today is we will be making... What are we making? You don't even know. We're going to make hollandaise. All right. So we are making hollandaise today. It was one of the mother sauces. Get ready for this. Here are the other mother sauces. An easy uh, little acronym is Beth V. I typically don't like those, but this one's nice. It is bechamel, espagnol, sauce tomate, hollandaise, and velouté. So we're learning one of the five mother sauces today. And it has incredible pastry applications, whereas the other ones, only so much. So we have... Three egg yolks, one large egg. We will have a half cup of butter. Mine is clarified. Yours does not have to be clarified. I just, that's how I came up in kitchens. So we always use clarified butter for our hollandaise. To clarify the butter, it's very simple. You melt it and you remove all of the milk solids that gather on top. You stand there with a ladle and you just skim it constantly uh, until it is clear. And then the water evaporates off through the boiling process. Or of course, you can buy it clarified already. Luckily in the area we live, there is a lot of ghee in grocery stores. Ghee is pretty much clarified butter. Yes, Michelangelo. Uh, joke. Okay, we'll get to the joke in a second. And we will have some salt and a little bit of lemon. All right, so let's jump in with our joke since Michelangelo is ready. Why should you tell him, I mean, why shouldn't you tell an Easter egg a joke? Why shouldn't? you tell an Easter egg a joke. I don't know, why shouldn't you? Because it might crack up. Oh, it might crack up? Ha ha ha. Anyway, so we're gonna go in, we're gonna put in about a tablespoon of lemon. Now, as a little quote-unquote pro tip, I never cut my lemons at the equator. I find that you get way more seeds out of them than that, so I actually cut them lengthwise about two-thirds or three-quarters of the way over. And then I will squeeze all of this out. And if I'm not happy with that, then I will squeeze this out. It's a nice little way to keep uh -huh. some seeds. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want to squeeze the lemon? Mm -hmm. You're right. Okay. Now squeeze it gently. We want to make sure no seeds are in there. Okay, you actually got to squeeze it though. Come on, Michelangelo. Let's see those muscles. That's why you should eat all your dinner when we tell you to. Come on, Michelangelo. Don't put your hand in the eggs. All right, good job, Michelangelo. I'm just gonna give it one final squeeze. You really tried, and that's what's important. There's our seed that we were hoping to avoid. And we squeeze and squeeze and squeeze. Yes, Michelangelo. Um, can we put that seed in my collection? We can definitely collect the seed because you think you're gonna grow a lemon tree from it. Absolutely, we will do that. I think we got one more seed. It happens, we tried to have it not happen. Now you'll see that I have a bowl and I have a pot, and the pot is only water. We're gonna go ahead and get that going. Uh, it needs to be hot, boiling is fine, we typically go right below a boil, uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to start mixing this. Now, quick word on whisks. This is a whisk that incorporates air. This is a whisk that typically is for stirring sauces. Now, I know it's confusing because we're making hollandaise sauce, but we do need to create something that's really airy and foamy, and then we're going to weigh it down with butter, so I would recommend an, a whisk with a more balloon shape than I would kind of a sauce whisk, which is a more narrow shape. Now this will obviously incorporate air. It's just not designed for that, so it will take you longer. I like to work less, so I will use the whisk with a more balloon shape. We're gonna whisk and whisk and whisk. We're just gonna get this going until we get it a little foamy while our water heats up. We could do this over the water, but there's no harm in doing it on the side. And we're just whisking, whisking, whisking. And this is where you start getting those really big pastry forearms. We're just whisking all the time. Right, Michelangelo? Yeah. 
Now, some really cool things that we can do with hollandaise once it's made is obviously it's very well known for eggs benedict, it's used at brunch and things. By now you probably know that we do breakfast for dinner on Mondays, so we're going to do kind of a variant of that. But I told you it has plenty of pastry applications. If you make a hollandaise and you fortify it with butter or some other liquid with a similar property, you can then use it for desserts. For example, I used to make hollandaise at a restaurant I worked at and instead of adding all butter, we would do half butter half butter and half peach juice. And then we would have a peach juice hollandaise that we would use on peach desserts. It was awesome. We could add a little bit of seasoning to it. If you fold in some whipped cream, you have something that actually brulees really, really beautifully. Yes, Michelangelo. Do you know why I said we can do? Oh, yes, I do know. Please stay on your stool. All right, so my water's coming up real nice. I get it over the top, and we're gonna whisk and whisk and whisk. This is what is considered a savillon. Anytime we whip eggs over water, it is called a savillon. Now we're using egg parts here. We have more yolk than we do uh, whole eggs or more than whites. But we're still going to whisk and whisk and whisk. And you'll see, as the bowl heats up, as we incorporate air, it'll get very, very airy, very stiff. We want to whisk it over heat at a pretty high, like, uh, revolution to kind of keep the air in until it will hold its own tracks. So it'll take a little bit of time. This is especially great if you have multiple children who like to help in the kitchen, just have them do it until they want to rotate out and you just say, great, now it's your turn, now it's your turn, now it's your turn, and you keep them coming back. You see I'm using a glass bowl today. It is not for the benefit of anything except you've seen it. You can use any kind of bowl that'll fit over heat. Not yet, but we're definitely not ready yet. We don't want to add the butter too early because then it won't create a stable foam that we're looking for. Now you notice I don't use the word meringue, but it is something very, very similar to a meringue. Meringues have sugar, this currently does not. But when we look at this and we say, okay, so a savillon is whipped eggs over heat because we're creating a foam. Savillon is another beautiful application in the pastry kitchen where we have plenty of options. If I take these and I add alcohol or liqueur to it and whip it, I get a really beautiful foamy sauce that I can put over fresh berries. If I want to fortify that again with the butter afterwards, all the better, right? There are even recipes out there where you can make ice cream base from Savillon, and it's super, super, super smooth because you've whisked it this entire time. Ice cream, yeah, and I'm making ice cream today. But as I'm whisking, hopefully you see it does get thicker. If you've got a pastry belly like mine, you can hold the handle of your pot. Keeps it keeps it nice and stable for you. That's why I that's why I maintain this belly is so that I can hold this pot in place. We're not worried about the steam coming out of the sides. It's not like chocolate work where we want to keep the humidity low. We're whisking, whisking, whisking. You can see I've whisked an awful lot, so I switched directions uh, towards myself, away from myself. We can do like a figure eight thing. Yes, Michelangelo. I'm Buddy, don't worry about the induction burner, thank you. Uh, um, but as long as you're incorporating air into it, you're fine, right? What we don't want to do is stop for too long and we want to make sure that we get our whisk all the way around the entire bowl because if we let this sit in place for too long or it gets too hot, it will curdle, it will scramble and it won't be much good for us at any point. You can of course do this at lower and lower temperatures, but then you have to whisk longer and longer and longer. I'm about two thirds of the way there. You see it takes a minute or two. I'm gonna turn my temperature down. I'm getting water everywhere because of the pot. It's fine. Don't be afraid to adjust to keep yourself safe and clean. Now remember I told you what I'm looking for is I want to be able to trail my whisk on top and it will leave yeah, technically yeah. what would we consider a ribbon. A lot of times the best uh, practice is to pick a letter, something with some shape like B or D or whatever. And what you'll do is you'll come up and you'll draw the letter and if the letter holds its shape, you're ready to start adding your butter. Getting closer all the time. What do you think, Michelangelo, how's it look? Pretty, pretty good. Now, if these are yellow and the butter is yellow, what color do you think this will be when we're It'll be yellow, yeah. So it's one of those things to keep in mind if you like a lot of color. This is an easy way to add yellow to dishes, uh, throw a hollandaise sauce, plus it's a very, very popular thing. People love hollandaise. If we start in reinforcing it with other stuff, we start delving into bearnaise and other sauces from that. That's why it's called a mother sauce. Yes, Michelangelo. You had your hand up, Michelangelo, what's up? Oh, you didn't have a question? Okay. So I'm looking at it now. 
I'm gonna drop my key just so I can check this. Right, I get the letter B, it's good to go. Now, we need to add this just like when we do kind of a vinaigrette, we're trying to add this nice and slow while whisking the entire time. Yes, Michelangelo? Can I pour some butter? Well, buddy, I don't trust you to pour it nice and slow. Plus, I need to be able to stop it periodically so that it can incorporate. By now, hopefully, we've learned that pastry is pretty susceptible to breaking if we don't incorporate the ingredients in the right way. So I'm putting it right next to where my whisk will pull it in. If I pour it directly over my whisk, it's likely to splatter everywhere and it won't be any good for us. But we're whisking, whisking, whisking. Now, I used lemon juice in the beginning, but as long as you have any acid, you can do that. Technically, you don't need an acid, but what it does is it makes it that much easier to whip the eggs for a longer period of time. That way they do not over whip. Getting close. And you'll see it'll get thicker and thicker. If at any point in time you add way too much of your butter and it just completely separates, whisk it as fast as you can. You can alternatively put this in a blender and try to re-emulsify it, or you can add a splash of water. Water obviously is the opposite of fat and it will help bring this together. Yes, Michelangelo? Um, I can see that if you stir it like really fast, then it looks like there's two of the whisks. Looks like there's two of the whisks, yeah. I've been whisking for a long time, so maybe I whisk better than most people. By now, a lot of you are gonna be tired, and some of you are probably like, hey, can I just do this in a machine? Yes, but it's hard to do the machine over this pot of water. If you have one of the handheld deals, you can do that. Or, of course, there are plenty of recipes, again, where you can do this in a blender, and it's pretty painless. I came up in kitchens where we weren't allowed to make a lot of noise because it was an open kitchen, so we had to do so many things by hand that nowadays I would probably just do with a machine. So we're whisking, whisking, whisking. I'm loving how this looks. Because it is a sauce, it should have the texture of a sauce, right? We're, we're not looking for a plate sauce, something that runs all over, but it should have a little buoyancy where it'll still hold its shape but it will gently cascade down the side of something like an Eggs Benedict. When I look at this, I am very, very happy with this, which is great. I haven't made a holidays in a long time, so I'm glad that it worked. And we're gonna open it up for any questions. I'm gonna grab a spoon so we can kind of see how it handles on the spoon. Now, the question is, can we use an immersion blender? You can, but you have to use a very different vessel. And again, it's pretty tricky in water. Uh, the way an immersion blender works is it obviously blends while immersed, so you need a tall container. So if you have one of these deli containers like I have, you could throw it in water and you would need to immerse and blend it the entire time. It can be done, but then your hand is going to be right over the steam. It's going to be kind of a tricky process, but yes, technically it will work. Now, here is our hollandaise. We pull it up. It's got a beautiful rich, it just barely cascades off there. It's still hot right now. Typically hollandaise is kind of made to order at home, but there's not a chance in the world we would make it to order in restaurants with huge volume. So we can make this, you know, every hour, every two hours, put it in a container that's airtight and leave it on the side. You may periodically need to blend it and that's where your immersion blender would really come in handy. And again, if it looks like it's gonna separate because of the fat, a drop of water will help bring it right back together. And that, Michelangelo, is hollandaise. Easy peasy, huh? That's all it is? <laughs> that is all that it is, yes. What did you think it was? I thought it, like, we were gonna, you know, bake it to it today. So we are not gonna bake hollandaise, but this is a foam, and it is fortified, obviously, with eggs, so technically, it is in the same family as a lot of baked mousses and baked custards. Mm. However, we are not gonna do it with this, but I do like where your head's at. Maybe if we threw a little flour in here, we could make the creamiest blondie known to man. What do you think? Yeah, you don't know. Okay, so if there aren't any more questions, this is our hollandaise. Obviously, I'm gonna reserve mine on the side. Uh, we can throw in a little pinch of salt. We can throw in some pepper. Typically, hollandaise does not have pepper, and it does not have other seasoning to it. Once we start adding different seasonings, um, it will turn into what we call daughter sauces, obviously from the mother sauce. We are gonna use this for our own little meatless Benedict this evening. Uh, we have some, what do we have? We have English muffins, we have some avocado, lettuce, uh, tomatoes, those. Cheese. Probably some cheese, yeah. 
Uh, we typically do meatless Mondays, a lot of times we do breakfast Mondays, sometimes we do both. And with the hollandaise, if you don't like vegetables with hollandaise sauce, I don't know if you like vegetables at all. Right, bud? Right? Are you ticklish in the show? No. No? No tickles? Okay. okay. What about this other No, I'm not going to poke the back of your show. So, that is our hollandaise sauce. That's it. Obviously, post your questions on the site, and we will see you guys again on Wednesday. Thank you.